Hello everybody, it is Sunday, so that means it's the start of a new reading vlog. And so it's time for me to show you all the books that I'm in the middle of and we'll see if I finished any of those at the end of the week or if it was other ones that I started that I didn't mention. <laughs> that seems to be how it goes. I, I do have books that I'm in the middle of that I want to read, but then I get to see all these nice shiny ones that I want to read. And so yeah. So I am reading on The Harvest Man by Alex Grecian. I mentioned this one, I think, briefly in the last reading vlog. I had just gotten started on it, and so yeah, I'm only on chapter 7. Uh, the chapters are like super short, and so I, I had it where I thought maybe I'd, um, I'd take till the end of the month to read it if I just read a couple of chapters. A day but some of the chapters are like really short because they're like only like a page or two and so then I'll read like an extra one so I may get this one done a little bit uh, sooner than I thought I was going to this is the fourth book in the Scotland Yard murder squad it is a book that I am reading for the series about series um, readathon that is hosted by uh, Krista from books and jam and Sarah from Sarah's nightstand and so if you like to read uh, series you should go check that out and um, this one is to read a, a series that you have, you know, read on, but it's been a while. And I've been working on this series for a long time, and I really need to get it finished. And this is the next to the last one. So I'm almost there, and I'd really like to finish up this series. Probably won't finish the series up this year, but I only have one more book to read for next year, so that would be cool. Um, they're really gruesome, kind of. It's a historical mystery set in the time during Jack the Ripper and all that stuff. So a lot of gruesome stuff going down. And the Harvest Man, he's really gross. So <laughs> I won't say how gross he is, but he's really gross. And so yeah, so so far it's not been too bad. And I am still working on Aliana Girl of Dragons by Julie Abe. She is the lady who... Uh, wrote uh, Eva Evergreen, a semi-magical witch, and there's a witch in here and her name is Nella. I, I've never read the Evergreen, but I could have sworn like she said that some mentioned something about Evergreen. So I was wondering if this was like kind of a, a spin-off from like that world or something. I don't know if somebody else has read that and this, they could let me know. Um, this one is out now. I am behind. It came out the 22nd of last month, so I really need to get this done. And I am, let's see, well, I'm a little bit farther than that because I have been reading on the ebook. I don't really know, but I'm, I'm over 100. This says that I'm at uh, page 119, but I think I'm a little bit farther than that. But I'm still within the same chapter, so I haven't gotten too far. But yeah, um, she has met the dragon. It's a Cinderella retelling, like I've said before. Um, Right now she's venturing off with the, the witch and so I'm kind of curious uh, what's going to happen with that. She really wants to go to some kind of ball. I can't remember what it's called. The far, farm something ball? Oh, it doesn't mention it on the back so I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's kind of like you with Cinderella at the ball. She wants to go to that really bad but you have to be chosen to go and she doesn't think she'll be chosen because you know she is um, the Cinderella type character in here and she's got a brother a stepbrother and sister and a wicked stepmother and so yeah so we'll see if she gets there or not and what happens and then my pick for the Autumn of Moor, I need to get rocking on because the week will be out before I know it, and um, that is The Duke for Diana by Sabrina Jeffries. It is the first in the Designing Debutantes uh, novel, and so I'm really curious about this one because it's about three sisters who, because of what their mother did, had caused a big scandal, and they are no longer marriage material, I guess you could say, and so they go to these balls, but all they all are all they are is wallflowers because nobody wants anything to do with them because of the scandal. But they keep going because they're stubborn, 
and going to hold their head up high and not let anybody bother them. And they're talking about how their friend, who's the ball that they're at, um, should have did this or did that to the ball, her dress, her the food, the, all the stuff, the orchestra, and everything. And there's this one lady, and this is in like the prologue section. So and there's this one um, lady who was kind of giggling and listening to them. And she ends up asking them um, if, because she's from America, but she married an Earl, I think it was, wants to know if they would um, like to help her with a ball that she's going to be uh, uh, hosting. Cause she's never hosted a, a ball from, you know, because she's from America, so she doesn't really know all the etiquette and everything. And so she, you know, will pay them, you know, to do this and everything. And so that kind of sparks the idea for the uh, event planning that they'll be doing since they're already outcast anyway so what's it matter if the three of them get together and uh, get paid for hosting for helping the host organize a ball and things like that and then it goes forward like about four years which is where I am and on chapter one I haven't gotten very far and so I'm gonna guess they've been doing the it's called elegant something but anyway the uh, party planning for people for about four years and so curious to see how things go on to Duke for Diana so she's gonna have to meet the Duke at some point so we'll see <laughs> but yeah so far it's good I'm like only like seven percent into it and everything so I haven't gotten very far and audiobooks what am I reading or listening to um I can never remember the name of the author. Just one moment. Wait, so I am listening to The Witch Haven by Sasha Peyton Smith. And it's the first in a series. It's a kind of, I think it's like a young, is it a young adult fantasy? Yeah. It's a young adult fantasy, which is, it's a perfect time to be reading this kind of thing. And uh, this is an e arc that I've had from last year. And so. I got the audio, I seen it was an audiobook, so I grabbed it. Um, the reason that I remembered this is because I had gotten an email from publishers about the second book that's coming out, and the second book is coming out October 11th. And so, yeah, I wanted to get in on this and see if I was going to enjoy it enough to want to read the second book. The second book that is called The Witch Hunt, so that sounds interesting. <laughs> and. I'm sure I'll have something else going on audiobook, but I don't know. Oh, I do know. I want to start, so I want to get it done early. I don't have it. I haven't got it from the library yet, but it's the it's the next uh, How to Train Your Dragon book. This is the one I need to take back to the library. And I think that one is called How to Steal a Dragon Sword. But anyway, the events that happened in this one kind of ramped up this series a little bit so I feel like there's going to be a little bit more action a little bit more um, things that are going to happen some troubles because of this giant dragon and he wants to kind of take over the world and so I'm kind of curious to see how uh, uh, what's his name I can't even remember I cannot remember names Hiccup should be able to remember that's a weird name Hiccup and Fishtail and all the other ones um, what kind of troubles they get into and everything so those are really quick they're usually about uh, four hours or less on audiobook David Tennant he's great does the narration and so yeah that's pretty much what I have I think in the works right now I am sure I will grab something else so I'm going to get off of here and uh, do some editing on last week's vlog so I can get it up and read some Hello everyone, it is Monday evening and I thought I would pop on here and talk about uh, Wit The Witch Haven by, I can't remember her name, Sasha Peyton Smith? Yeah, Sasha Peyton Smith. <laughs> and this is the first book in a series, I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or a duology, a trilogy, a series, I don't know, but I do know that there's a new one coming out. And it is about uh, Francis, who finds out really quickly at the beginning of the book that she is a witch and that she can do all this stuff. And she gets uh, 
instead of the police getting her because of something that happened, she um, gets whisked away to like this uh, Haxhaven, Haxhaven Sanitarium, which is basically um, a place to study magic. But the magic that they're studying there is kind of like basic learn to do your chores with magic kind of stuff, you know, because it is a historical um, setting and she wants to do more than that kind of stuff. Who, who cares about learning how to sew by magic and, and things like that and to do household chores. And she, her uh, brother had died a few months prior and she finds out about this. There's this book, somebody's been leaving her letters, there's this book that has a resurrection spell in it and she wants to learn how to do that kind of magic and she wants to be able to talk to her brother and uh, there's a couple of witches that are in the uh, uh, Hex Haven a place that want to kind of learn that stuff too and there is a boy Finn who finds her because uh, he said he's been always seeing her in his dreams and everything and uh, he wants to teach them how to do real magic and all that stuff. And this all leads up to some things that go on at the end. Um, there is the, there's the, like the boys side and then there's the girls. So that you got the Hex Haven and then you have the sons of the, I cannot remember how you pronounce it. Duran, son or the sons of, anyway. They're, uh, it's kind of like the the male witches, and then you got the female virgin with at the Hexahaven, and um, they you find out that they don't really like each other very well, and some things go down, and it's very hard to explain, I think, without like spoiling some things, but um, it turned out a little different than I thought at the ending. I I wasn't sure if I was going to like this that well and I thought it was okay it was kind of your basic um, young adult witchy book I mean you know she learns about her powers and then she wants to have more powers and then um, they you know she wants her ultimate goal is this one thing but then some other things happen and it turns out you know and then she's instead of uh, thinking things through she doesn't think them through then she ends up getting everybody in trouble and all that kind of stuff I mean it's just your basic kind of but it did have some like uh, some things at the end that made me a little bit curious about maybe the next book that's going to come out I think the next book is called Witch Hunt and it comes out in October and so yeah I'm a little curious to see how things are going to go from from how this one ended but um I, I really just thought it was okay I like the characters were fine um I did think it was just a little slow in, in parts and um it was like I listened to it on audio and it was like a 13 hour audio book so it was, it was a little long I thought and it could have been shortened a little bit maybe but overall it was okay so I I give it a 3.5 I had a hard time deciding, but I think I'm going to give it a 3.5. probably give it a 4 on Goodreads, but like my own personal rating, it would be like a 3.5. It was better than 3, but not quite up to par with a 4. It was just, it was okay. It was a good, you know, good read. It just wasn't, you know, great. And so, yeah. So, I, I am curious to see, check out the next one, like I said. And... So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to uh, talk about. I'm in the middle of all the other books that I've been in the middle of, and hopefully I will come back on here and talk about another one soon. Bye. Hello everybody. It is Wednesday evening, and I am here to talk about a book that I haven't even mentioned to you guys, because I found out that... A Good Dog's Guide to Murder by Krista Davis. It is the newest book in the Paws and Claws series. I don't even know which one it is. I think it's number eight, maybe. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I found out it was out on audio today, and I like automatically went to Hoopla, and I grabbed it. And I had a busy day being out today, and so I may have listened to the whole thing. <laughs> 
Um, Dad had a doctor's appointment that we had to go to, but I, did, I wasn't informed ahead of time that he didn't want to come back home after his coffee time at Denny's. So we had to stay in town and we went and looked, I went to the library, went to look at um, Antique-ish, which is like this uh, kind of upscale and flea market, a antique -ish kind of place, thrift store, and uh, went and looked there and I uh, used my earbud while I was doing all this so that I could listen to <laughs> it while I was out and so I thought I would go ahead and come on here and let you know what I thought and so this one is it's in the town of Wagtail where uh, there's the hotel um, caters to people who have animals pets and so you can bring your dog your cat and everything the whole town pretty much caters to animals and um, and this one it is Thanksgiving and it kind of flows into like Christmas so you could use this one for uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas if you're a seasonal reader and uh, they have a gingerbread making contest and so there's a bunch of people in town it's overflowing and Holly's mother decides to show up and she wasn't expecting her to show up and uh, so there's that, and then she's really excited that her mom was there because she hasn't seen her in a while. It's just she wasn't expecting her. And so you've got uh, stuff going on with her mom, and then um, there is a tree in a uh, part of town, and the guy that owned it uh, stipulated that the town could have that area as long as they didn't ever cut down the tree. And it's a big old tree. I mean, it's like huge. And well, they've had some weather and it's getting the tree's getting old and some of the big old branches were falling down and they were going to have to decide what they were going to do if they were going to cut this tree down. And if they did, they could like make the wheel like null and void and and things like that. But, you know, you have to think about the safety of the town, so uh they decided that they were going to go ahead and cut it down, but it wouldn't cut down. <laughs> like they were trying to like use the saw, the chainsaw, and nothing was happening. And somebody said they had known, they had heard of something like this before that it, it was full of concrete. If an old tree gets hollowed out and people don't want to get rid of it because it's such an old tree and like everything, they'll put cement inside the tree. And so then they had to try to knock it down a different way and when they do they find a body and so now it's who might have gone missing during the time that this might have happened and so of course they're getting all kinds of people um, calling in or coming in about missing people and things like that um, Holly narrows it down uh, to like I think about three people that she thought that it possibly could be she's helping um, Officer Dave try to figure this all out and everything and um, so she's dealing with that and running the business and the hotel and everything and her mom being there and all that stuff and finding out a lot about different people in the town and about this one guy who I guess was quite the womanizer and um, that uh, they that's the one that she really thinks that it might be but she, she's still investigating the others this one sounds like prime candidate for being the one in the tree but who would have put him there because there's a lot of suspects and so it was really fun what I really liked about it was that Trixie which is her dog had like these little snippets now I'm not sure if it's at the beginning of a chapter or at the end of the chapter but anyway it kind of reminds me you know because this is a good a good dog's guide to murder so Trixie is giving her little snippets about how to solve crimes and how to get your humans to know where there's bodies and stuff because Trixie is very good at finding dead bodies that has been one of the whole things through this whole series she's always sniffed it out <laughs> and Holly, that's why Holly gets in the middle of things because she's always finding the dead bodies because she's got Trixie with her and also there is Tinkle Toes that's what her name is 
the cat. And uh, they're always up to their old hijinks and stuff. And so I just thought that was funny because it, it just cute because Trixie was given like her little um, 411 on how to find bodies and how to get your human to do what you want they want. <laughs> you know, you got to put your people where you need them and, you know, you got to use your sniffer and all that kind of stuff. So it, it was cute. I really liked that. It kind of added some fun to it and it made me uh, chuckle a few times because it was just funny. I really love uh, the town of Wagtail. I love all the characters. I like Holly, um, Holmes. I was gonna say I almost forgot his name, but I like Holmes, and uh, yeah, just her Oma and all the all the characters. They're just a lot of fun. So it was. It's always fun being back in that uh, that setting and everything. And I like that it had kind of a crossover from Thanksgiving to Christmas. And everything. I, I'm not a seasonal reader, so it doesn't bother me to just jump right in and read a holiday one. But yeah, the only bad thing is, is now I'm all caught up again, and so I have to wait until the next one comes out. Hopefully, there's a next one and everything. You never know with the cozies, but hopefully, there's a next one. And so, yeah, I just wanted to jump on here and let you know that I read that and what I thought of it. Uh, oh, and I gave it four stars. I even forgot to say that. I gave it four stars. I really liked it, it was cute. And yeah, I will be back on here whenever I finish something else. Bye. Hello everybody, it is Wednesday night and I am coming to talk to you about a book that I'm not sure if I mentioned that I was going to read this week. I think I've kind of gone off the rails when it comes to reading. <laughs> I don't remember what it is I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog, but I do think that I have just totally jumped ship and just started reading whatever. But anyway, I have um, How to Steal the Dragon's Sword by Crusader Kyle. It's the ninth book in the How to Train Your Dragon series. And this one really ups the ante a lot. I knew from the last book that we were really starting to get somewhere. Seems like all the stories that we've heard about uh, Hiccup has been leading to something. Why is he uh, supposed to be like the best the best Viking king ever or whatever uh, he's young in these and you he's writing these like his memoirs and so he's older telling you know about his younger years and all the adventures and things that he's had happen well in the last one he did something and it kind of started this thing and so now we've got a dragon rebellion going and I won't say why but you'll just have to read the stories but he needs to uh, try to figure out how to fix things and um, there is to be like the king you have to have all these different things from the uh, the lost king is it the the king's lost things so whoever the only a champion with all of the king's lost things and in this one they're having a sword fight but some things happen with dragons and course Hiccup gets in all these adventures and he has to go do all these different things and uh, there's also a character in this one because of something that happened in the last one and yeah it's getting to where it's kind of hard to talk about like what's going on because I don't want to spoil anything but it really upped the ante I think in this one where you're really really curious about what's going to happen next this one was really action-packed there's all these dragons, these like fierce dragons. You got the good dragons and some bad dragons, and you got you got toothless. <laughs> and uh, some things happened at the end of this one, which makes me want to read the next one right now. <laughs> but uh, Sherry and I are reading one of these a month, and so I'll have to wait till next month to see what happens. But uh, yeah, they're getting thicker too. This one was five hours on audiobook, and the other ones were like four hours or less. So they're getting a little bit bigger. There's a lot more things at stake in these. Hiccup has to uh, rescue a lot of people. He has to fight certain people. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I give this one uh, four stars. The narration, David Tennant, he's awesome. He does a great job. 
I would almost say maybe a 4.5 because I did enjoy this one quite a bit more than the other ones and because of Dave, David Tennant's narration, he just really makes this like awesome. If you've got young readers and they've never tried the How to Train Your Dragon series before, you should get it for them. The only thing that I'm not a big fan of is the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the really weird graphics. They're, they're, they're kind of really weird. I'm guessing that maybe they're supposed to be because, uh, I don't know if, if Hiccup, when he was younger, is writing these, or, or what, but, yeah. Because these are supposed to be kind of like his, like, memoirs or something. Like his diaries and adventures that he had. But, yeah. So, I got that one done, and trying to make my clips not very long, so I'm just going to shut up about that. And then I'm going to mention that I hopefully will be getting this one done this week. I have only this much left. I'm at 75%. So I want to get Aliana Girl of Dragons done. It's really getting really good, so I'm like really invested in it now. I think once we got about halfway through this, it really picked up. And so I'm curious to see what happens. I am working on Harvest Man by Alex Grecian. And I have made a little bit of a dent. I have gotten, you know, so I've made a little dent. I'm 146 pages into it. Went to the library, and I probably shouldn't have, and I got uh, Mouse Watch in Space by J.J. Gilbert. I was so excited to see that they had this because I haven't got to read this one yet. It's really small, but um, I really like this series, and I like uh, Bernie and... Uh, I can't remember the other little mouse... The little rats, uh, Jarvis. And... They're going into space in this one, and I'm a little curious about why. So this will be fun. So I'm probably going to put that in here, even though I don't need to be adding more to my reading week. But, yeah, it is what it is. And anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say. So, good night. Hello, everybody. It's Friday, and I have a book to talk to you about. So I finished Aliana, Girl of Dragons by Julie Abe. This was the book that I really wanted to finish this week, so I'm really glad that I got it finished. So, this one is about Aliana, and she, her father has died. He went, they have this thing called the Abyss, and he went down into the Abyss. Uh, they usually look for things down there. It's really dangerous, but you can maybe find, like, some, like, gold and some things down there. So, he done that quite regularly. And, um, he en ended up, uh, something happened to his rope, and he died. And so, Aliana is taken care of, if you could call it that, by her stepmother. And then she has a stepbrother and a stepsister, who are horrible. Anyway, she works in the inn, and she also uh, works doing, like, the laundry and sewing and mending and things like that with her uh, grandmother. And her grandmother's not even treated very well, and it's not even her grandmother, it's actually her stepbrother and sister's grandmother, but she kind of, like, uh, adopted her a little bit. But the, it's the stepmother's mother, or whatever, but she don't even, like, she just wants her to die so she can get her stuff and sell it, kind of thing. And so, the stepmother's, like, horrible, and she owns, she runs the inn, because her father, Eliana, it was Eliana's father's inn, but now she runs it because she has it and everything. And um, so Aliana wants more than anything to just get away from there and everything. And um, she finds this uh, little dragon as a baby and uh, kind of has a connection to him and can do some things that other people can't do with this dragon. And at the beginning, it was a little slow, I thought. Because you're building up to, like, the stuff that's going to happen at at the end. So, you know, I'm like, I, I'm sure it's going to get better. And it does about halfway through. Because it is a cinderella retelling. telling It's just a Japanese kind of version. And, uh, and it's a middle grade. So, I mean, it's not, it's got, like, bits of the Cinderella in it. But not, like, all of the Cinderella. So, uh... About halfway through, we start to really see a lot of the 
the Cinderella like retelling stuff happen. Like her reason for having to be home um, by midnight is like something totally different um, and things like that, you know. So, but it does have like those little elements that made it really fun because Cinderella is just one of my favorites. It's always been my favorite Disney cartoon. And I love the Rodgers and Hammerstein uh, live version of it and things like that. So it's, it's always been a favorite. So I love retellings. And yeah, this one was fun. Uh, I really liked uh, Aliana and I like Anella, which is the little witch that she meets. And, and Tachi, which is another witch. And just some of the other people that... But the stepmother and her stepbrother and sister were horrible people. And it's like, you know, y'all deserve whatever you get at the end. <laughs> but, yeah, it was fun. It's They're living in a time where dragons and stuff are contained by the witches into the in the abyss and stuff. Be, they used to be able to roam free, but I, something happened and, like, now they've got them contained into the abyss and everything. She was near the abyss and everything when she sees the little baby dragon about to get attacked by a large night dragon and so she protected it and everything and they just bonded really well and so it, it this goes through uh, several years it's not like just like a few months like it has different parts in it and it goes through different years and stuff so like the dragon grows up really big and grows up really fast. He's like, wow, you were just a little bitty and now you're like really big. And um, some things happened that needed her help, um, which instead of like the whole, I want to find the princess or the lady who wears this, uh, the shoe, uh, there was an incident that happened that she helped solve and she helped fix. And because of that, the royal advisors are wanting to find the uh, girl in the green cloak or something like that, you know, that uh, that was the one because they want to thank her for what she did. But she doesn't want to be found kind of a thing. So that's kind of like the little Cinderella part since it was really cute. But I, I really like this. Uh, we were talking about it before because some people, it had it marked as like being the third in the series. And I was like, but it's not build as being part of the evergreen series whenever i got it but then they had it under it as third and then somebody said they that it was more like a prequel because nella evergreen which is the witch i think if if it's what the ones were saying that she might be like the uh, like an ancestor to evergreen so maybe the grandmother or something like this so it's kind of like a prequel so I'm going into it like that, hoping that I didn't just jump into a series and make the third one. Because I haven't read uh, the Evergreen series. But I do want to now. I, I would like to read about Eva Evergreen and her adventures and stuff. Because I really like this one. And I like the writing. It was really nice. And so, since I did like this one, I'd like to try more from this author. So I'd like to try the Evergreen one. And I give this one four stars. I liked it. And so I'm still working on uh, Spell for the Lost Things by um, Jenna Eva Welch. I haven't really read much on this one, but I do need to kick it into gear. I'm only on chapter four. I want to work on this one and get this one finished, I think, next. I'm a good chunk into it. I'm not sure if I'll get it done before this reading vlog is over, but I do want to try to get it done, or at least almost done, by the end of the, this reading vlog, which ends tomorrow, so um, we'll see. And I'm really liking this one, but it's, it's really gruesome, so if you don't like gruesome things. And then I added a library book, because why not? And so I am also reading The Mouse Watch in Space by J.J. Gilbert. I Want, I've read the first two in this series, and I hadn't got to this one yet, and I kind of forgot. It kind of fell off my radar, and when I was um, looking at things at the library trying to find some spooky middle grades, I came across this, and I was like super excited that my library actually had a copy, because none of the Overdrive libraries that I have 
have this, so I was really lucky that they had it. But um, this is about Bernie and Jarvis. Bernie's a mouse, Jarvis is a rat, and they're in this uh, mouse watch program. And something is going to happen that puts them in space. I'm not quite sure. It's their mission, save the world. <laughs> and I am also my autumn more pick for this week. I haven't gotten through because I've been reading other things, but I am 18% into um, a Duke for Diana, so I'm getting there. I really like this. Uh, so far, I have I've really enjoyed what I've read of it. I'm only 18% into it. So I haven't gotten too far, but right now I am I am super enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. The banter between the uh, two main characters have been really fun so far. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have as of right now. And so I will come back tomorrow to either talk about something that I might have finished or wrap up the reading vlog, whichever comes. <laughs> so we'll see. Hello everybody and welcome to Saturday and I'm going to talk about one book that I haven't talked about yet and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Even if I do finish something, I don't think it's going to go on here. So um, I have decided, I think, that I'm going to try to just do my weekly wrap ups like just instead of vlog style, just do them like I had been doing them. For the last couple of weeks I kind of liked doing that and I kind of want to save like doing the vlogs for like something fun um, maybe like a weekend vlog here or there or maybe I'll do like some kind of reading project but I feel like whenever I do the the weekly vlogs then I don't really have room to do any of that other stuff and so I think it would be kind of funner and easier to edit <laughs> <laughs> um, I will uh, be the first one to say that I'm not a big fan of editing and uh, I don't like to leave long gaps in or things like that to go unedited so and I have to put my pictures in so yeah um, so probably be doing that going forward um, maybe every once in a while I might throw in like a weekly reading vlog Maybe if I think that I'm going to be doing something cool that week or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, um, the book that I'm going to talk about is uh, Be My Ghost by Carol J. Perry. I listened to this one yesterday. I finished it. And um, this one is the first in, I think it's called The Haunted Haven Mysteries. I could be mistaken. But I knew that was the first book in the series. And this, it's about um, Maureen, who uh, she's a little bit down on her luck, and then she finds out that she inherits um, this, like, little hotel in this small town. And uh, she has no clue why she inherited it, because she has no clue who the person is that put her in her will. Like, she has absolutely no clue who this lady is. And so she decides to go and check it out since, you know, she's kind of in between things. And um, she gets there and finds out that a lot of the locals think it's haunted. And there's a lot of, about the hauntings around. And there's ghost hunters there. There's uh, newspaper reporters there. And um, she is just getting there and finding, you know, the people like Elizabeth, who is like the manager and runs the place actually thought that the lady who willed it to uh, Maureen was going to will it to her and so she's a little bitter <laughs> about things because she does a lot of the work around there and then there's this uh there's like I think there's like four of them three or four of them those older workers that uh kind of sit out on the on the porch or whatever it is and kind of um, do do whatever you want them to do when you need them to do that uh, employee type things and um, they know a lot about the goings on in the hotel and the town and so that kind of helps and um, right off the bat like she doesn't know anybody she doesn't know anything she gets there there she's seen this uh, in their like hotel like lounge or whatever bar like restaurant She's seen a guy there. She didn't really pay much attention to him. 
And then later on, she finds that guy outside sitting in one of the chairs. And when she goes to, like, talk to him or whatever, and she, like, touched him and he fell, and he's dead. So she's like, oh my goodness. So she, like, calls the police. Well, of course she's, like, automatically a suspect because she, you know, found the body, she owns the place, and when they find out what happened to the guy that he was, um, poisoned with something that, um, they automatically think, you know, that she must have done it. Either that or the bartender, whose name I think is Ted. And everything and so she's like but I didn't even know this person I just got here I just arrived anything that's in the medicine cabinet was the late like ladies I can't remember the lady's name but she's like you know I just got here she can't understand why these people think that she could have had anything to do with this yes he was a ghost hunter and there's a lot of people don't like ghost hunters around and she keeps saying that she doesn't believe in ghosts even though there might be a little ghosty in there that talks to her <laughs> and she's still refusing to believe in ghosts and so yeah you know it, I thought it was a pretty decent start to a cozy mystery series um, I'm not quite sure if I liked how the policeman kept hounding her when I mean really she just arrived there she doesn't even know the guy she doesn't even really believe that the place is haunted or that there could be any hauntings or any of that kind of stuff but he's just and i understand following the evidence and stuff but he was just i don't know he's kind of like a bulldog when it comes to like her he just wouldn't like think that it was anybody else and i, I didn't really like that very much because i she obviously has no clue what's going on and she was a little reluctant to try to do any kind of sleuthing on her own a little bit I thought she just didn't it kind of like stuff that she learned kind of fell into her lap more than her like going in and doing any kind of sleuthing which I know some people like that and prefer that um, I do think that uh, the characters and stuff are gonna be a lot of fun I I'm curious to see going forward how it's going to play out um, there is going to be another book I think coming out in October and I have been told it is Christmassy themed, and so I may wait until then and check that one out. But yeah, I'm kind of curious. I like Carol J. Perry. She does the Witch City series that I have reviewed a lot of, and um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how she's going to do another series. So only be the second series that I've ever read from this lady. So I'm a little curious. Sometimes you know a new series from somebody can be a little hit or miss. But I'm hoping that it's going to be more hit than miss. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I, I liked the, the characters and everything. I liked Maureen. I liked Ted. I liked the um, older couples that older... I think there were men and women. A mixture of men and women that um, hung out there. That helped around there for... You know, they were kind of like... On, I don't know. It seemed like I was getting that they were on staff when they were needed. But not all the time maybe kind of like part-time staff or something like that but I liked them they were really fun they knew a lot about like the hotel because you know they obviously been there for a long time so they were fun um, I thought the mystery was pretty good I didn't figure it out so I thought that was pretty good and um, yeah so overall four stars I liked it and so yeah so that's the last book for the week I have read I read five so not bad and uh, a lot of these I think I was already in the middle of, so that helped. Um, I finished The Witch Haven by Sasha Peyton Smith, I believe. <laughs> Hopefully I get that right. Which I thought was a pretty decent start to like a young adult fantasy series and gave it four stars. And then um, a, good guy, a Good Dog's Guide to Murder by Krista Davis. It's so the latest book in the Paws and Claws series, and I love that series. So I knew I was going to like that one and give it four stars. And then uh, How to Steal a Dragon Sword by Crusader Cow, which is the ninth book in the How to Train Your Dragon series. Getting closer to the end, there's 12 of them. This one was really, really good, so now I can't wait for like the next one. <laughs> kind of left me with a little cliffy. I can't wait. And so I give this one four stars.
then I finished this one, which I've been working on since like last month, so, you know. <laughs> and so this one's Aliana Girl of Dragons by Julie Abe, and I, I enjoyed this uh, Japanese retelling for a middle grade of Cinderella, and this one's four stars. And then Be My Ghost by uh, Carol J. Perry, so not too bad. And I like them all, so that's always a good thing. And so, yeah, um, also, if you're not seeing this on Sunday, it's because my computer and internet is messed up. So it may be late, but it will be there. You will see it. <laughs> but it might not be Sunday. We'll see. And so, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.